Hello everyone, today I want to show you how to create a wind rose chart, which is one of the nicer chart that I've ever seen. So the user case is like this. So I have a list here uh, with all the country names and with their CPA, uh, CPI data in 2017. Uh, it's ranked from high to low. And I also have a world CPI average, which is 2.2. So if you want to visualize this, um, the most common way to do it is just the bar charts, um, which is like, let's say it's just as simple as that. And then basically Excel just populates for you, right? Um, however, if you find this is kind of plain um, and you want to make, make it more fun, or actually, for example, if you're showing this in PowerPoint, um, but you don't, instead of this kind of size, you don't, um, you have a kind of like a rectangular size for your chart, then when you have a lot of countries, then the bars wouldn't look nice. And then this is when I can introduce to you the wind rose chart. So basically, um, it's still a bar chart, but then it basically shows the CPI by country in each of the bars um, in a rotating format. And then it shows the word average as a circle. And then you can easily see from here which countries are above the word average and which countries are below. And then you have the labels on the side. Um, so it's actually showing the same thing as a bar chart, but it looks nicer, much more professional. And um, it can also feel the uh, fit uh, into the real estate of your PowerPoint. So I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. So the, actually the very first thing you do is to organize your data uh, to prepare for the charting. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do this from scratch and then you can basically customize it with however many countries you have and whatever data you have. So for example, uh, in this list, I have 17 countries. Um, and uh, you want to know that down. Actually, Jim, let me just know that down uh, because you will know why very soon. So uh, what's important about this is that um, actually you, this, how many, um, how many like data bars you have will determine how many great degrees they each have in this circular model. So you, we know that the circle is 360 degrees. And then when we divide it by the total number of data, we get 21, approximately 21. So that means for each of the bars that we're creating, we're getting roughly 21 degrees. And why does it matter? Um, because it's going to matter now when we try to create our data for it. So uh, let me create the data with the first column um, named degree. Um, it is basically from one to um, from one to uh, 360. So you can actually drag it down to 360. But then another way that I'm doing it um, is actually a better way that I figure out from trier is that now you know how many degrees you want, um, you, you need for each of your country in this case, then you name your degree just by like in, in the batches of 21. So what I meant here is that, um, you fill in the data up to field theory up to 21 and then you start all over from one and then you basically just do that and then actually let me copy this down to 360 so you know field series okay so it's Oh, I have it too many. So let me 360. So let me have, so now I know where the 360 row is. And then I go back to my chunks of 21. And then I just keep on copying it down 
until I hit 360. So with my chart, I need to do 17 times of this. Uh, for yours, it will depend on how many, how much data you have. Okay, so now you see I'm almost hitting it to the end. Um, I do have three degrees left. That's okay. Uh, we will see later um, that on the chart it doesn't really show quite obviously. So I I'm just f uh, filling the placeholder of one to three. Okay, so now we have all the degrees. Um, now let's put in the data. So our data has the title of 2017 CPI. Um, and uh, basically, for each of the 21 degree chunk, we need to fill in uh, their data for the country. So for example, let's start with Brazil, it's 3.45, and then you should fill, um, fill in 300, um, this for the 21 rows. However, um, if you do, this is okay, um, if you don't want any gaps between your bars, then it's okay to have all the uh, 21 rows as with number with no gap. However, if you want some kind of gap like what I have here, so you can identify each bar more easily and then it also looks more like flower, then what you need to do is uh, have at least two, um, two uh, rows that's blank so then you just have that as zero uh, and then basically um, for the next one you have the first two as zero as well and then you fill in the next one for example this is for Jordan and then you fill it up to uh, the next 21 that you have Okay, so basically you just continue to do this for um, for all the data. Um, okay, so now um, I've done some of those work and then now you can see all my 360 rows are filled with data with two rows blank in between. Um, and uh, each of those data you will see will represent each of the country that we have. So now we have um, set up the data for CPI ready. Now let's set up for world. So for world, we know that it's 2.2. And then we also know from the chart that we want it to be a full circle. We don't want any gaps. Um, then the way we do it um, is actually much easier. You put in like 2.2 and then you basically copy that down for all the 360 rows that you have here. Okay, so that is all the data that you need for um, the bar and uh, the circle. So now let's try it. Uh, basically you, you select um, those two rows with data, uh, with heading and then you go to data. Uh, no, actually you go to insert and then recommended chart or uh, it's actually this uh, reader chart. So let's go reader chart and then let's just select reader for now. So um, let me actually, let me bring this up so that you can see it closer with the data. Yep. Okay, so this is how the data will look like after you just did one round. Um, so first thing you can delete, like select the data uh, around it, you can delete them uh, so that it looks cleaner. Um, this is a, uh, this is basically the uh, axis for the label for each of those circles. Uh, you can also delete it because later on we're gonna create our own label. So you basically have, um, have a prototype of the wind chart that we want to have here. And then the next thing that you want to do here is, for example, if you want this to be a field uh, instead of just empty, then you select the shape and then you can uh, go for design and then change chart type. You can see you have both as radar and then I want to change this um, radar chart 
to uh, to a field reader, and then here you go. So you just change that. You don't need a secondary access. Click OK, and then you have a field reader. And then if you don't like the color, you can select it and um, basically go for um, any color that you like. So this just filled uh, the line, but then you can also select the field. And then let's say you like orange and then you can just select that and then it's the same for the circle you can select it and then the formats here like on the right hand side and then let's say I just want red for it and then you click red you can also select the width of your um, of your circle so you can make it um, like thicker or you can also make it thinner so for my purpose I just want it to be like that uh, and then here we go. So now it's actually uh, showing us the bars and the word average. And then the next step for us is to create uh, the labels around it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you like it. If you have any question, please leave me a comment and I will talk to you very soon.